Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today, Wattcycle sent me out a 12 volt battery to check out. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. All right, and when you open it up, the first thing that you'll see is a Bluetooth app user manual because this battery does have Bluetooth. And the, and the other thing this battery has is a super small form factor. And when I say super small, let's compare it to your standard Group 31 battery. Like this Red Odo. Look at that. It practically hides it. It is, uh, you know, it's like a quarter, it's a quarter inch shorter. I mean, look at that. It can fit between the post bolts of this Group 31 battery. That's crazy. The measurements are eight and a half inches by eight and a quarter inches. And this battery is a little less than five and a quarter inches deep. So this is a very small battery for a hundred amp hours. And we're gonna be testing that hundred amp hours to make sure that it's all, it's all packed in here. All right, some of the specifics about this battery is like I said, it's a 12 volt. So that would give you a 12.8 volt nominal, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And that equates to 1280 watt hours. This battery does have cold temperature charging protection. It can handle up to 100 amps of discharge consistently with no problem. So we'll be testing that in a little bit. And it does say it has a max of 300 amps, give or take 50 amps. So we'll be kind of pushing that limit as well to see what happens. It also is a smart edition. So you will be able to download an app and connect to this battery to see uh, some more information about it. So we'll be doing that in a little bit as well. And with any battery that you receive, you should always check the voltage to make sure that it is working. Now I have recently found out that in some instances of smart batteries, they do completely shut off the BMS. So the BMS terminals, when you connect your multimeter, it may only show like two volts. And that just means that the manufacturer shut the battery off to keep it at its, uh, at its 50% capacity. So we'll test that and see if that's the case here. And if it is, I'll show you exactly what to do in order to turn this battery on. All right, and the voltage of this battery is 13.18. And that is exactly where your lithium iron phosphate battery should be when you receive it. It should be between 13.1 volts and 13.2 volts. That is right around 50% capacity. Now, if this battery were asleep, all I would need to do is get another 12 volt source in order to wake it up. And I would just need to touch it for a couple seconds and it would activate the BMS. I'll have a link uh, right up here to another video where I show six ways on how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and charge this battery all the way up to, man, this battery, it is so light. Let's check out the weight real quick. So the weight of this battery is 21.8 pounds. That is just amazing. So what I'm gonna do is now that I know this battery works, uh, I'm going to go ahead and charge it up to 100% and then I'm going to do a capacity test to make sure that this little tiny battery does have in fact 100 amp hours packed into it. So once I get those results, I'll let you know. Okay, the capacity test is done for the Watt Cycle 12 volt mini smart battery and check out, and check out the total capacity, 104.17 amp hours. That is perfect. And here is the discharge graph. You can see it, like once it starts discharging, it's at about 12.9 and it gets down to about 12. So you're only looking at about one volt for 95% of the whole capacity of the battery. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start some high amperage testing on this watt cycle battery. And while I was doing that, I was gonna go ahead and show you the app. So I was installing it on my Android phone using the uh, Bluetooth app user's manual, which is pretty nice. It makes it super easy. Uh, the one thing I don't like though, is as soon as I scan the QR code for the Android app, it comes up with this screen right here. I'll just go ahead and put it on the, I'll just go ahead and pop it up right here. And it comes up with this where it says, you know, uh, BMS Meta is what I'm wanting to download. And then there's this thing front door right underneath it. And so if you scroll down, you know, there's install buttons all over the place, but they're all for this front door app. So it's almost like Watt Cycle is trying to make you download another app 
um, instead of the BMS app that it needs for the battery. I don't like that. That's kind of deceptive. You have to scroll all the way down and then install 4.4 megabytes on this green bar right here. And that will install the BMS Meta, which is the app that you need. And also it's not on the Play Store. So you kind of have to hope that it's okay. I understand that they're probably saving money by not putting it on the Play Store, but seriously. All right, BMS Meta is wanting to know my location. Don't allow. Okay, so apparently you have to uh, enable the location in order for it to recognize the battery. All right, and then there is the battery right there. And right off the bat, I do like uh, what this app is showing me. So let's go ahead and start this test and, um, and then I'll show you a little bit more about the app. Okay, so what I have here is the Watt Cycle 12 volt mini. It is connected to a 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. Um, I have my timer for five minutes. I have a 200 watt heater, a 500 watt heater, an 1100 watt griddler, and a new wave induction cooktop that can go up to 1300 watts. We're first gonna go ahead and uh, do a 100 amp load for five minutes, just to make sure that the battery can handle it. And then we are going to do a high amperage test to see if we can get the battery to shut off. We'll start by turning on the 500 watt heater and the new wave induction cooktop at 600 watts. And actually, as you can see on the app, we are, uh, we're, we're pulling about 94, 94 amps. And that's about 1200 watts. Let's go ahead and turn on this 200 watt heater. See what that gives us. There we go. Now our current is over 100 amps. The power is 1370 watts going up as the heaters kind of click in. And I do like the fact that they show you the temperatures on all the MOSFETs in Celsius. And I do like the fact that it shows each individual cell in the battery. It shows you the voltage of each one. So that's always nice to see. It shows a charging switch and a discharging switch. Let's hit this discharge switch and see what happens. Yeah, everything just shut right off. That's good. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. Inverter click back on and everything's starting back up. All right, we're starting our timer for five minutes. There we go, it started. All right, and uh, I switched over to the alarms on the app and it shows that there is a DSG overcurrent alarm. Let's see if we go to settings. Oh wow, you can see parameter settings for protections. Oh, you need to enter passcode for all of these. So you're not gonna be able to get into the settings at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait for five minutes and uh, we're gonna see the results of this high amperage test. All right, our timer is now over five minutes and this ran the uh, 100 amps. And actually, if you look at the screen, it actually ran it at 114 amps for five minutes and it didn't have any issues whatsoever. And the temperatures are showing uh, right around 45 and 50 degrees Celsius in the MOSFETs. Okay, so now we're gonna start stepping it up and see if this thing will turn off at that 300 amp mark. Cause it does say it will, it will it does say that it will have an over amperage event at 300 amps give or take 50 amps so between 250 amps and 350 amps so let's go ahead and just turn up the new wave to 1300 and you can see on the app that the amperage should start going up there we go now it's at 155 oh and it's done <laughs> The app, uh, the app showed 155. Uh, I feel like this app might be a little slow. Let's go ahead and put a clamp meter on, try it again. I do log on the app. It does show that the, uh, the discharge switch has been turned off. And if we go into warnings, it shows at 1116, we had an over amperage event. So let's go ahead and see if we can turn it back on. And no, it looks like you cannot. There we go. Actually, it took about uh, 30 to 45 seconds and the battery recovered and uh, it turned everything back on. Okay, so now I have my amp clamp on there. Let's go ahead and try this test again to see how high of an amperage we can get on the amp clamp. 
We're turning on our new wave, 1300 watts. Start. Uh, yeah, and it got up to about 170 amps before the battery uh, shuts off. So that, uh, that high amperage protection, it works a little too well because it says it can power up to 300 amps, give or take 50 amps, but I can't get it to go over 170, which in my case for a battery this small and compact, 170 amps is too much anyway. So I think that is just fine with this test. So now I'm gonna go ahead and throw this battery in my freezer and we're gonna see if it has cold temperature charging protection. All right, well, I just pulled out the watt cycle 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from my deep freezer, and it is frozen solid. It's been in there for at least 24 hours. I think actually right around 30 hours. So it's an ice cube. Um, I went ahead and pulled up the app. Let's go ahead and, uh, and put it on the screen. And what we're gonna see is uh, under the temperature, you can see that the two temp measurements on the cells are red and everything is showing like negative 16 degrees celsius so i think those red indicators are showing that it is under like it's un, it's in a under temperature event right now uh, if we actually click on warning messages you can see that there are uh charging ut alarms and that means under temperature alarms so I am guessing that this thing is not going to start up, but we're going to go ahead and do the test anyway. And what I'm going to use is this LiPo 4 charger from Lidtime. Um, there's a light right here and it is pretty much an indicator light. Right now it's on standby because it's flashing green. Once I connect this to the battery, what's going to happen is it's going to go from a flashing green to a solid red for about one to two seconds because the charger is going to try to start charging. But after a couple seconds, it's going to switch to a solid green because the battery is going to tell the charger that it's full because it's protecting itself. So let's go ahead and connect it and see what happens. Here we go, connecting now. Goes to a solid red. And it shuts right back off. That is exactly what it should do when your battery has low temperature charging protection. All right, well this battery from Watt Cycle passed really all the tests that I gave it. It was over capacity, um, it has low temperature charging protection, it has over current protection, um, and I mean it can power 100 amps for, uh, you know, for five minutes. And also it's a very, very small form factor. I mean, it's smaller than a Group 24. So this battery is really nice for portability and for capacity along with all the other protections that you have. So if you have any questions about the watt cycle battery, please go ahead and leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this item in my description just in case you wanna look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.